Yum, yum. Hello, V-Ray using Motonauts. This is Greg from Pixelfon Do, and this video is going to cover in significant detail the V-Ray two-sided material. So V-Ray offers a two-sided material that allows you to put different materials on each side of a polygon and then blend between those materials if you want to with a translucency option. So the obvious use case for these is uh, this material is, of course, leaves. So I'm going to go through some... Uh, test renders of leaves with just a standard V-Ray material where it has the same texture on both sides versus the two-sided material with translucency. And I'm also going to show how to set this up in the schematic. And it has to be set up in the schematic. So it is not something that you're just going to really figure out on your own. You really do have to watch a video like this. Uh, or you can read the manual, but nobody does that. So enjoy the video. Um, this tree right here is just rendered using the standard V-Ray material with the same texture on both sides of the leaf. Now, if you go out in nature and that's the the outside part of the world <laughs> that you may not get to very often if you never leave your chair in front of your computer um, and pick up a, a leaf, those little green things on the end of the trees and take a look at it, you'll notice that the, the top of the leaf or the side facing the sun is going to be a little more vibrant. It probably has a little more chlorophyll in there to soak up the sun rays. And it also generally is covered with a little more of a waxy coating to protect it. And the bottom side of the leaf is going to be a little bit duller, a little less saturated, a little less light, um, not quite as shiny, not as waxy as the top side of the leaf. So we want to emulate that with the V-Ray two-sided material. And so when I drag left here, you'll see this tree coming into uh, vis uh, uh, focus here is using a V-Ray two-sided material on the leaves and with some translucency on. So you'll notice right away it's not as vibrant as the side on the left here, which is just using a standard V-Ray material. And that's something to keep in mind because oftentimes, you know, it, it's appealing to see these bright popping colors, but it's not necessarily realistic. And if we push in a little bit, you'll see the difference in even greater detail. Um, so why don't I actually do that? Let me look at the this close-up version here. Let me just set that to A, and I'm going to right-click on this version over here and set that to B. And when I slide between these two, you can really see that desaturated underside of the leaf here versus if I push this way, you know, the left-hand side of your screen here, it's vibrant and it's the same texture on both sides of the leaf all the way through. And uh, if I go over here, you see this duller underside of the leaf. You'll also notice that we're losing a lot of this detail here. These orange or yellowish spots, we're really losing a lot of that on the leaf. And that's because of the translucency options we have there. So the translucency options will, depending on how you have it set up, will sort of um, wash out the leaf a bit. And you don't really see the effect of translucency because this isn't backlit. And translucency really comes into play when, when items are backlit. And I'll, I'll show that in a second here. If I look, if I'm going to set uh, this guy to B right here. And this is the same texture with a V-Ray two-sided material with no translucency. So it is using a different material for both sides of the leaf. So you get the dull underside. Um, but the top side looks just as vibrant as the standard V-Ray material there. So you don't get that washing out with the translucency. And you don't really notice any translucency because this isn't backlit. You don't notice the lack of translucency. So depending on your scene, you may just want a V-Ray material, uh, two-sided material, to get the differences between the top side of the leaf and the bottom side of the leaf, but not have translucency on. Um, if your scene isn't really lit to showcase translucency, in, in which case this one really isn't because it's, it's lit in sort of a standard key light fashion. Um, but it's, it's very different when it's backlit. So let's look at the backlit option. So if we look at, um, I'm going to load up this guy here, and this is going to be a backlit tree with a standard uh, V-Ray material versus this one, set B. And so if you look over here, this is you know backlit. The HDR has been rotated, so the light's coming from over here. And it's really flatly lit from the standard V-Ray no translucency material. If you, if I drag this way, you can see a subtle difference. And it's really not that noticeable at this distance with the translucency options on the double-sided material. I'm really going to have to push in. You can see it up here. This may be too small on your screen. But you can see like the differences in, in lightness in some of these leaves that are getting backlit. If I push in here to this one, whoops, let me just set that as A, and set this one as B, it becomes quite a bit more obvious. So if I 
go this way, we are seeing the translucent options. If I go this way, it's standard uh, V-Ray material. So look at these leaves right here. A lot brighter, you see the shun, sun shining through it, and some of those details, those orange dots, are coming back. So this way, it's it, this is the standard V-Ray material. You're, you're, it's not lit at all from the back. And if I go this way, it's lit from the back, and we're getting these, you know, bright, you know, this detail back, these bright sort of yellower spots in here. If I keep on going, you see these leaves here that are being backlit, and here we get this color bleeding through. So it's very noticeable when we're up close, but it's not as noticeable when we're pushed back. Again, something to keep in mind when you're creating this scene. Um, if I now this is with a translucency texture so this is actually using a mega scans texture for the leaves uh, leaves not leaves and uh, let's see if I double click this guy this is the translucency texture I'm using so the translucency texture can use a full RGB image and this is what just ships with mega scans uh, it can also use uh, just a value though so if I click over here you'll see this translucency value um, you can just have a gray or white value there. And just to show you the difference, this is a value of 128. Let me set this as B. So if I load this value up here, that's just using a sort of a medium gray, we're losing some of that yellow detail that is still translucent, but this is sort of the entire leaf is a little bit brighter. We don't have that yellow detail, the sort of the bright spots of the leaves or the thinner spots of the leaves showing through. If I go up to like 256, sort of a uh, really high translucency value, um, it really doesn't look that good. In fact, it looks terrible, right? So we have really washed out leaves and really dark areas. And so the point I'm getting is more translucency isn't necessarily better. So if I set a 128 gray translucency to the left and a textured translucency to the right, this has the texture I just showed. Uh, this texture on the right side on the left side it just has this I'm just using a gray value right of 128 and again you can see this detail in here coming out in the textured translucency so if you have a translucency image map or you want to create one you're gonna get some nicer detail in your image than just using a flat gray value in the uh, in the two-sided material okay so I also have a what do I have here? I've got a 4K one I rendered with translucency just so you can take a peek at it. Um, and this is the material at 4K and we get to push in a little bit. So you can see there's quite a bit of detail in here. All these yellow spots you see uh, with it being backlit, are, those are coming from the translucency. And if it didn't have translucency, these would be just really flat and kind of dark. So. Again, depending on the type of image you're doing, you know, if you're getting in close like this, the translucency is a no-brainer. It looks great on your image, but if you're really far away, like in this image, you can hardly tell, right? So if I set this to B and I set no translucency to A, you know, no translucency on the left, translucency on the right. You know, from this distance, I mean, it's, it's noticeable, but it's not super noticeable. So again, it's just sort of up to you how you want to do it, but there's that. Okay, so with all of that out of the way, let's dig in and take a look on how to set this up. All right, let's set up this two-sided material. Right now I just have a standard V-Ray material and I've got some image maps on here. So this has no translucency and no double-sided material or double-sided uh, material effect on it. Uh, I do have a normal map, these are mega texture textures or mega scan textures and there's the uh, opacity map and diffuse color and a reflection glossiness map so that is giving us this couple notes i do have opacity mode set to clip that's going to render faster than the default normal or stochastic it doesn't have quite as much sampling around the edges of the clip maps but when you have a lot of trees in the scene or a lot of grass or whatever a lot of clip maps this is going to render way faster and it's going to look pretty much just as good in my opinion so I do always set that to clip. I do have translucency set to none. We are going to be dealing with translucency in the two-sided material, not these sub-materials. So keep that to none, or you're gonna be doubling up your translucency effect and getting a sort of a weird um, effect there. 
And okay, so we've got that. And I am going to, at the top, I'm gonna to add a layer and we're going down to V-Ray materials and V-Ray two-sided materials. So I'm gonna add this guy, drag it to the top and right off the bat, we lose our leaves and that's because just like any other material this is sitting on top of this stuff so it's overriding it and nothing's set here yet so that is um, what we get no leaves you can actually rename this initial material here to front i really suggest you do that so it's easy to find these that is the v-ray front material now and i can grab that from here if i'm thinking okay all i have to do is specify my materials over here in this in the uh, properties panel pick the front material. Um, you would think that'd be all you need to do, but that's not how it's going to work in Modo. So I am getting the front material, but I'm only getting these channel values. I'm not getting any of the textures. If I actually change the diffuse color to red or something, you're going to see it uh, showing up over here. So again, that's just a product of the shader tree. These are being overridden and we need to go into the schematic and plug them directly into this material for this to work. So. I'm going to add this guy to the schematic. Let me just push this up a little bit. Um, since we've already specified it over here, you'll see that there's a yellow uh, diamond, and there's our two-sided material with the front specified. And then I'm just going to grab these guys and bring them over. You can grab them all at once if you want to. Sometimes that creates a mess in Moto, or you just do it uh, one at a time if you want. So here's my normal map, and you'll notice that in uh, the two-sided material actually has a slot for bump and normal. So I'm actually going to plug that into the two-sided material so we get the normal map really on both sides. And then I'm going to grab the diffuse color, add this guy, and drag it over here, and get this one plugged in, texture color to diffuse color. If you hover, you'll see it pop up a little bit. So I've got my diffuse color on. Again, not quite what we're looking for, but we'll get there. Um, grab my opacity, grayscale, and reflection glossiness at the same time. You can add these things uh, in multiple nodes at once if you want to. Just sort of, you know, Moto is really desperately in need of an auto uh, arrange function in the schematic. It does not have that, so that really sucks. But uh, so this guy is our opacity grayscale. So just drag texture color to opacity grayscale. And uh, V-Ray is, whoops, opacity color. I don't want opacity grayscale. And V-Ray is smart enough to just you know grab the one channel and plug it in. And then uh, same thing with this guy, which is the reflection glossiness. So plug that into reflection glossiness. And okay, we're looking okay, not bad, but we're still missing a back material. So I'm gonna select my front material and I'm just gonna right click and duplicate and I'm going to name this back because I like to be organized and I'm gonna drag this up here. Now we can see that this is, uh, because I duplicated it, they're both plugged into the front material, I want this plugged into the back material. And as you can see over here now, V-Ray material front, V-Ray material back, and we have a translucency texture. You can see the translucency coming through already. If I turn this just to black, that sort of uh, brightness is gone. If I crank it all the way up, you get some, you know, a little bit uh, overblown brights and too dark darks. But we're going to actually texture this anyway, so I'll just leave it there for now. But we have a little more work to do. We want the, if you remember, we want the underside of our leaf to look a little different than the top side. So a couple ways to do this. I'm going to take my image that is plugged into diffuse color. And over here, I'm going to add a V-Ray color correct. There's two V-Ray color correction nodes. Uh, they both will work. I'm just going to grab the top one. I think they're probably from different versions of V-Ray or they just, you know, V-Ray has been around for a while. It's got a lot of nodes that can kind of do the same thing. So I'm going to push down here just to zoom in a little bit and you can see what's going on. So I'm going to unplug that. I'm going to plug the texture color into the texture map. Okay, so now I can process this green image here. So this diffuse color image, I'm going to process to make it less saturated and a little bit lighter to be on the bottom side of the leaf. So then I'm going to plug the output, the texture color output, into my diffuse color input on my back material. And once I do that, I can go in here and adjust some settings. The way this works is you actually, you know, click these on. I'm going to click HSV processing on. So now it's processing. 
Now I'm going to turn my saturation down to about 0.5 saturation gain. So half is saturated, a lot more gray. And the value gain, I'm actually going to bump up to 1.5 or so. And that's going to give me a much uh, brighter, more washed out underside of the leaf. And you may have to reset um, VRT here. Let this kind of come in. Let me just hit the reset button. And now you can see that sort of washed out underside of the leaf coming into effect here. If you're not sure if that's working, you can always just over crank values. This is something I do a lot. I'll just say change the hue. You can see that sort of purpley stuff just so you know what's working. Um, I tend to over crank values sometimes just so I know something's going on. But definitely have that washed out underside now. And then we're going to blend between the two with, with the translucency effect. Right now it's, we're just using this um, simple color which is sort of just a linear blend between the front and the back and again if I turn this all the way to black uh, you'll see with no translucency it's a little bit easier to see the difference between the front side of the leaf and the back side of the leaf so we can push in a little bit more I might be at hundred percent but uh, push in a little bit so there's that sort of desaturated back side of the leaf right and I'm actually going to add a image map here and we use the uh, clip browser you can't see this, but there is in fact a translucency image here. I'm going to add. And this is the translucency image that comes from the uh, Mega Texture or Mega Scan pack. Right click, you can do this two ways. You can right click and you can go down here to V ray two sided material channels and set it that way translucency color. And here you see these yellow dots and some of that detail coming back through in the translucency of the leaves. Um, you could also just add it, you know, if you want to, you can go to the schematic. If you want to stay in the schematic, you can, you know, of course, drag this guy down here and do texture color to translucency texture. Same thing. It's going to be the same effect, right? Because this is on top here. It's going to be setting it. And keep in mind, you know, v it looks pretty complicated, but, you know, keep in mind, like, V-Ray has lots of materials. So each material, like here's the standard one, has all these different effects. Well, the V-Ray two-sided material really only lets you add a translucency texture. So that's the only one in there. But you can also just plug into the schematic directly. So now you see that coming in. Let me push out a little bit just so you can see the difference and push out. Or hit the uh, asterisk on your numeric keypad. It'll go 100%. If you don't know the shortcuts in the V-Ray window, you can do plus and minus on the numeric keypad um, or asterisk to go to 100%. So that's always nice. And yeah, you'll start to see quite a big difference in the look of the leaves with the two-sided material. So we got this translucency effect coming in right here. We just sort of, and you've got the underside of the material as well. So that's it. There's a fair amount of schematic work that, that goes into making this work, but um, the results are pretty good. And it's the only way to do it. You gotta jump into the schematic. So there it is. Yum, yum!